Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. Got some very serious stories coming out of Russia as of right now. From what we understand right now, according to RT News here, the report of this evening, uh, Putin has canceled his visit to France amid Syria tensions. He's supposed to be meeting with Franco uh, Holland, uh, the uh, president of France, but uh, prime minister of France, rather. And this has suddenly changed because of the tensions that are going on. France has actually uh, canceled several of the uh, things that uh, Putin was supposed to be doing during that time. And, of course, Franco's uh, Holland was saying that he would be asking some very stern questions uh, of uh, uh, the president of Russia, President Putin, there when he, uh, when he visits France. Uh, but, unfortunately, it looks like that Putin has decided this is not a trip that needs to be done at this time. But our breaking story that we really wanted to bring to your attention here is uh, from two different publications from Zanak uh, News, and in both publications, such as the ones you're seeing here, the word home, uh, there on the, on the top of your screen there, let me kind of bolden that for those of you that might be able to read, read a little bit of Russian there. Uh, but the article's title here is saying that uh, it's calling for all of the children and family of Russian uh, families there to return home. Now, just to give you a little Google translate of the article, I had my wife look at it. It says, Russian officials and deputies advised to return the children, their children and parents home. Uh, that's what the title of the article says there. As you go into the article, uh, they are stating that at this point here, not even to finish their education for this part of the year, but to return home to the Russian Federation now. Now, from what we can gather in the articles, this one as well as this one here, uh, it is not stating on here, both of these are, are Zanak, uh, or no, I'm sorry, this is Snob right here, Snob.ru is reporting, basically just quoting Zanak's own article right there, that, uh, the, that, that they're, they're saying it's official, but yet it's not been able to be confirmed by any official government source there. Now, again, this is Snob rep uh, quoting Zanak. So Zanak is really the main uh, leader of this article. So they learned about the Kremlin's recommendation to return the children of Russian officials back to the motherland there. Presidential administration infor informally recommended that Russian officials up to the highest level of return uh, in Russia of children of parents who have left to study or live abroad, says Zanak, with a reference to the five officials whose families are just abroad. And one of those families happened to be uh, Foreign Minister uh, Lavrov, which his daughter is studying in the United States. There was another minister as well that it spoke of in the article where uh, their child is actually studying over in uh, Switzerland. So in both the United States and Europe, they have children that are, they're saying that they should, it has been recommended from the Kremlin, uh, and, I, and I'm assuming this is a leaked uh, source here uh, that Zanak is getting, but they're saying for them to return home. Now that's a very serious situation indeed because if Russia uh, even if it's not considered official, but if the recommendation is being made, that lets us know that Russia is really concerned about the heightened tensions over Syria and that this could actually escalate into a much bigger confrontation than what we're seeing right now. And on top of that, to see that uh, President Putin has uh, dropped his meeting uh, with uh, French Prime Minister uh, Franco's uh, Holland there, then there may be more to it than what meets the eye. And we know that we have seen a lot of tensions at the uh, United Nations Security Council, the veto there. Uh, France put the, put the resolution forward. Uh, Russia has vetoed that. And of course, we already know the United States, John Kerry is not very happy about any of these things that are going on either. Uh, so it's very serious, uh, something we want to be watching closely. As of now, I don't know of any other information other than the Russian sources that I'm sharing with you here. Zanak uh, right here, and of course the quoting from Zanak is snob, uh, uh, snob.ru, and of course, like I said, again, zanak.com. Uh, we will have both of these articles posted uh, inside of uh, uh, the, the links here to where you can look at this for yourself there. Uh, continuing on, let me just take you real quick, just to re just as a uh, little thing, just to remember here, we are uh, we're at Yom Kippur, and speaking of Syria, and this being the thing that could ignite a possible nuclear conflict between the United States and Russia, one thing that happened in Israel today that my wife brought to my attention is just a beautiful story on United with Israel, and that is on Yom Kippur there was a lady that. 
uh, felt such a passion for the suffering and dying of the children in Syria that she united Jews all over the country within just a short period of time, just a few days before Yom Kippur, to pray for their Syrian neighbors. You know what, I'll tell you what, you know, the, the Israeli government could learn from what this lady did right here. I'll read a little bit of the story here for you because it was a remarkable story and the Israeli government, we know, have been involved in the Syrian conflict uh, and some might say, no, not really. They only have attacked the Syrian army when uh, shells fell over into Israel. Well, the shells were not fired by the Syrian army where the Israeli government attacked those positions. When also Russia hit the, uh, the intel center outside of Aleppo, it was Israeli intel Mossad agents as well as CIA, British, uh, Qatar, Saudi, and Turkish uh, secret people that were working inside of there according to Pravda.ru, which is a state-run television news agency inside of Russia, uh, and also from the Sputnik uh, Arabic language news source that was also speaking about what happened there. It still has never gone public before, uh, but as I say here, it's a shame that, our, that, the, that the government of Israel, which is our, our, my own people, the Jewish people, would be involved in the Syrian conflict when this, uh, the president, uh, Bashar al-Assad, has not uh, attacked uh, Israel whatsoever. I think that our government should get out of this war and should leave it immediately as well as the United States and let Russia and the Syrian people deal with this conflict. Anyway, it says the world cannot accept the slaughter of innocents and I hope our prayers open the gates of heaven tonight. Hundreds of Israelis gathered across the country on Monday to pray for the welfare of their Syrian neighbors in the night before the holiest day of the Jewish year, Yom Kippur. Prayer rallies were held in nine different locations, including Jerusalem, Tel Aviv, Haifa, uh, Pardes, Hana, Beersheba, uh, Tekoa, Ariel, Ma'al Gelboa, and the Golan Heights, where the shofar ram's horn was sounded in solidarity. According to the UN estimates uh, and the Syrian Obser Observatory for Human Rights, over 400,000 Syrians have been killed in the past five years of the civil war, including some 50,000 children. children. The event organizer was Annette Kramer, 39, of the Galilee, told the TPS that a recent news report on Syria spurred her to organize the prayer gatherings. She said, I recently saw a news report that showed two Syrian children crying. There was something about their crying that reminded me of the sound of the shofar that we just heard in the synagogue on Rosh Hashanah. After seeing how the war has caused such terrible suffering from the Syrian people, I felt that during these holy, holy days, I had to do something for our neighbors. Now that is a godly way to do. Thank God for, for, for such a, 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 an incredible woman as Annette Kramer that has done this for the Syrian people. God bless her tremendously. Um, also, one other thing I thought was kind of interesting I wanted to share with you. A journal poses as an intern to spy on RT's Deutschland, the German RT news source uh, there. He came in as a spy. They were trying to find out how involved the Kremlin was in running the RT's uh, operations in Germany. They've been accused quite a number of times as, as being a propaganda machine for the Russian government, only to find out that the man that was doing the spying for another a news source there ended up backing and believing the RT crew more than he does any of the German sources whatsoever. It's a very moving article. We'll post a link in there for you there. He come away believing that RT was probably the most unbiased media around and clearly stated there was no uh, interconnection between Moscow and what they were doing in Germany. Whereas he also, uh, the article goes to state how that in several other news sources there, uh, in Germany, they have been clearly, even during the Ukraine war, the government was clearly affecting what was allowed to be said publicly and what was not allowed to be said. Very interesting indeed. I'm Stephen Benoon. You've been watching Israeli News Live. Shalom and good evening and Chag Sameach to all of our friends around the world on Yom Kippur. And by the way, check out our link. We'll include this as well in the subject line below, Danoon Institute where we will be broadcasting tomorrow a special broadcast on Yom Kippur. I think it'll be very insightful and eye-opening for you as well. It'll be a real blessing, no doubt. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Shalom.